So you want to make original compositions in FL Studio. Well, too bad. It's not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not? I'm just kidding. Of course you can do it. That's why I'm here to help you figure this out. Now, this video is going to be targeted at a very specific kind of composition. You might have seen these compositions show up in your recommended. You might have seen my video on these compositions. <laughs> But basically, they're around a minute in length, and they normally consist of about one to three instruments. No more time to waste on an intro, let's get started. Three, two, one, go! To make music, you need instruments. On a digital audio workstation, you can get virtual instruments. Here's a nice little virtual instrument, it's called Spitfire Audio Labs. It's actually a library of virtual instruments, all free. Very popular virtual instrument in this genre is the soft piano. Okay, now that you have your instrument, it's time to write the music. So I want everybody to pull out their pen and paper, because it's time we're going to learn classical notation. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. Okay, I'm just kidding, but we are going to have to learn some music there. Oh my god, no way. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you need to know what a chord progression, a scale, a BPM, or all these building blocks of music, I would check out this video and come right back. But now, assuming that you know these things, we can proceed. So you're going to want to start by writing a metric modulating to do a 163251 with bossa nova syncopation and polyrhythm. Starting is the hardest part of a composition. So let's do a quick track breakdown. For instance, you can look at this track, Why Was I Born by Zolly. Now if I were to split these into their respective parts, let's say that there is a melody or a lead melody harmony or the chord progression, counter melody, and bass and sometimes drums. Now some of these pieces just have melody and harmony, some of these pieces just have melody and counter melody, and some have all of them. That just depends on what you feel like your piece needs. That being said, I normally start with a chord progression. Now as you hopefully know by now, we can play white notes and it is called C major. Oh, but virgins, I think that C-sharp has a much brighter tone, and you're missing out on so many qualities of music by playing in just C major. Okay, so now the song's in C-sharp major. Now, the advantages of composing in FL Studio mainly lie within this tool right here, the piano roll. With a MIDI keyboard, you could record your playing directly into your piano roll, and then play that piano roll through a VST. This allows you to use tools like quantizing and note editing so you can make your imperfect playing into a perfect composition. But sometimes it sounds better to leave a little bit of imperfection. And whether you're going to be handwriting your notes into your piano roll or playing on a MIDI keyboard, you're going to need to know the theory around it. So musical ideas kind of exist within these three elements, harmony, rhythm, and melody. Chord progressions hold the harmonic content but there's also rhythmic content in them. Melody is comprised of melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic components, and all of this is in service to the main goal of music, which is sounding good. So what is good? Well, an Aristotelian would say, not for real, good can mean a lot of things depending on your goals in music. You might make something that you really enjoy, but everyone hates. You might make something that you hate and everyone likes. But with art, I think the best approach is to put your identity within a shared language. Your identity is important because when others compliment your work, it feels like a compliment to you and not just an empty remark. And the shared language is important because nobody can truly compliment your work if they can't understand it. Shut the up! Now, I do think instrumentation is an integral part of making these compositions. Your instrument could be a keyboard, a keyboard or a keyboard you just have to throw some random things out inside of a key and try to find something that you like Now, there are a lot of ways I can describe the chord progression that I just came up with. 
One is the movements between major and minor, with the F major and the E minor being the kind of center chords. You can also simplify that even further to kind of in and out chords. Because this F major 7 is built on these sister notes with the D minor 7 and the A minor 7, it represents a kind of place out of the key. And because this E minor built on a lot of the same notes as in C major 7, it represents the in chord or a place close to the root or tonic. Chord progressions involve both harmony and rhythm. So I find it really helpful to add rhythm into your chord progression. A fun way to do that is to play your root note separate from your chord. Now this rhythm is actually in 3-4. One, two, three. So if you go into your settings, and go over to project settings, you can go ahead and change that time signature to 3-4. Now let's just get a rough recording of that chord progression in. And in the beauty of MIDI, I can go in and erase mistakes. And um, your oh, gum should be oh, by the end of the where's week. my dick at? Where? Hey! Let's quantize that, control Q. So we have a major seven, F major seven, a minor seven, E minor seven, back to the major, back to the minor. And then we drop down from the minor to another minor, D minor seven. But that kind of contrasts with this D sharp, which is out of key. This is kind of an A diminished, but playing it with this sharp on the bass adds a lot of tension. So then when it comes back into that E minor, you get that nice resolution. The reason that I say instrumentation is important for this is because of the rhythm of the chord progression. You can come up with a rhythm like this just writing into your piano roll, but that takes a lot of understanding of rhythm that you don't need if you just go play things that feel good. Now if I click this button, I can use my keyboard as a keyboard. And while it's not a good keyboard, it's still admissible. So I would say starting out, try to record your rhythm in and default to seventh chords. Now I'm going to start using this claw tool, which is very good for this genre. First thing we're going to do is just add a little bit of strum. Now with tools like this, they might look complicated. Really, all you're doing is tweaking things until it sounds good to your ear. Just think of like a baby playing with toys. So I think that's pretty good. We've added a little bit of humanization to this. After our quantization, because it was a little too human before. Now we are entering the domain of melody. It's a melody. Play your chord progression on loop and mess around until you start finding something that you like. Obviously playing things in key. You don't want to start going uh, full out in the beginning of your melody because the piece needs some time to build. So that I think is going to be the theme. Let's record that riff in real quick. While well, past me is figuring out this melody, I thought I'd add in some words here from someone much better at this than me, Azali. Azali always works out the chords before the melody, but for writing his melodies, he actually does a hybrid between sheet music Hell no, man. and noodling on the piano. While I don't think you need to learn classical notation to replicate his hybrid, the idea of getting broad general strokes and then adding in the finer details to fill in the gaps is unquestionably good advice. The two biggest things to think about when writing your melody is how it interacts with the chords it's playing over and how it interacts with the scale you're playing in. It might be the ninth of the chord you're playing over, but it might be the second of the scale degree. If you're playing the changes or your melody is following the chords, then playing over the chord is what's more important. But if your melody is more key centered, you might care more about the scale degrees. Control down shifts down an octave. And I think a good way to build this is to play it in octaves after. Hold 
play in octaves up. You might have noticed that when I played that in an octave up, it sounded less dissonant than when I had it in an octave down. That's because if you have too many tones in the same octave, or crunchy harmony, the frequencies interact with each other a lot more, creating what a mixer would call a muddy mix, and what a musician would call dissonance. Now, here I'm using a strategy for writing melodies where I play chords that I think sound good over the other chords, and then I arpeggiate these chords. I think the problem here is symmetrical distances. It just sounds too robotic. So, it's time to change that. Here, I'm still using a lot of the ideas from the chord tones, but I'm moving them rhythmically, as well as tweaking some of the notes themselves. So I started with chords, and I used the notes, toyed around, until I landed with this. Here I'm adding in a resolution for the piece, resolving it to C major. And here I'm adding variation into the start of the melody. Make sure your velocities aren't messed up like that. Now we're going to add a counter melody or a bass or something else. Let's just start with string. If we go strings long and then play in the higher orchestra, it's gonna be. You drunk all the fucking milk, man. Give me my goddamn milk. Ah, my milk back. I don't really like that. Okay, instead of adding to the top, we're gonna get some more in the back here. Let's go like 50% reverb. Maybe boost this back to like 50%. And let's go. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. While all is selected, press delete to delete it all. Switch to the next pattern, Control V to paste, and then put that pattern in. Or you can go over to the pattern and do split by channel. That's a lot easier. All I'm doing is selecting these groups of notes, holding control and dragging over, and then moving them up and down octaves with control up and control down on the arrows. Now, if Labs was a paid program, we would have all sorts of different expression.
Uh, the best way I have found to replicate automating expression is using the master volume. But to end around, we'll probably start it very low. Okay, the last touch is tempo automation. Right click your tempo, create automation clip, copy your value, and get ready. Actually, let's start with a little tempo automation. Now you don't want to overdo it. Whoops. That bit wasn't even funny. Now I got to delete all of these. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yay. I just made a new one. What tempo automation does is it creates the push and pull sound that you hear in classical or orchestral or arrangements. You can feel the tension build and release as you go between. Also, don't forget to give it a corny name. And you're done. Psych! You thought we weren't gonna talk about mixing. Okay, but for real, mixing speedrun because it's not that complex in this genre. Two very important things. You want a little bit of stereo shaping. Let's put this in the left. And let's put this in the right. And if you're mixing an FL Studio, you gotta add a spoonful of sound goodizer. It's only a spoonful! So you don't wanna go too crazy. That wasn't even that funny, and now I gotta delete all these sound goodizers. FL Studio added. Isn't it called like Luxverb or something? Huh? Where is it? Why is it in? It's in new. Actually, I really like that default. Now, another essential thing is clicking this button. Now you are ready to record and upload your composition to YouTube. Make sure to leave a comment if you make one of these compositions, because I want to hear everyone's try at this. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a subscription. And to hear the result, click on this video right here.